Mike Juicy, and from Somerville, Mass., Dave Driscoll. Okay, Dave comes in averaging 119, and Mike is at 117. All right, so there are the four bowlers who will compete on this afternoon's program. And, of course, uh, for those of you who may be uh, new to the program here on Candlepin Skins, we know we have a lot of new cable systems joining us all the time, particularly in uh, Massachusetts. We want to welcome all of you who are joining us for the first time or are relatively new viewers to the program. This is Candlepin Bowling, uh, total pinfall like you're used to, but there is a whole new element, and that's why we call it Candlepin Skins. Here are the rules for the program. The four bowlers compete individually, and they roll one box at a time. Each box has a dollar value assigned to it. And the high score in each of those boxes wins the skin or the dollar value. If there is a tie for the high score in the box, then the money carries over to the next box. And then, of course, the money grows and it gets even more and more interesting. Now, the top two bowlers in total pinfall return from week to week. We bowl two games here on Candle Pin Skins. Now, in each game, the first three boxes are worth $20. The next three boxes worth $25. Boxes 7, 8, and 9 worth $30 each, and the 10th box worth $75 in each game. Tom Morgan is back again. John Lang is back again. Dave Driscoll and Mike Giusti are here to challenge them. We'll be back to start this two-game match on Candlepin Skins after these words. Don't go away. Candlepin Skins is brought to you in part by Rocking M Toyota Dodge Nissan. As we mentioned, the roll-off for this edition of Candlepin Skins held in the Middlesex area in Massachusetts. The finals held at the Malden Square Bolodrome in Malden, Mass. Mike Giusti was the top finisher, 661. Dave Driscoll at 643. And so they have qualified to appear on the program. Uh, just missing Robert Anderson by two pins. Stu Bergman fourth. John Monaco fifth. Some of the other uh, bowlers who competed in the finals. Large field, of course. But it's Mike and Dave who qualified to get here, and Dave Driscoll is going to start this program off today. We're glad to have you along. You've had lots of fun here in recent weeks on Stars and on, uh, Candlepin Skins and on Stars and Strikes. But particularly the story here has been Tom Morgan. Uh, he's been here every week since we started the new season. Not a new season anymore. It's been so long, and <laughs> he's right. still here. <laughs> It's gone through a few seasons. <laughs> <laughs> Dave Driscoll opens with eight. And Mike Giusti takes ten. Twenty dollar skin here in the opening box. Take a look at that triangle conversion using the wood coming out of the channel. Three, five, and six. Now we get to look at which call it. Uh, who, who is this? <laughs> oh, there. Help me out, Tom Morgan. <laughs> oh, he's on the head pin and he gets a nine drop. John Lang. No luck for John. He will have to look at the six and seven with no wood. Tom starts with a spare. Maybe good enough to win the skin, and it is. John Lang has to work out the two singles for a 10 box. So Tom Morgan gets the first skin of the day worth $20. And we go to box number two, which is also worth 20. Mike Juicy. How ironic is this? Tom bowls one box, gets a spear, wins 20 bucks. Two weeks ago, he goes 309 for two strings and wins 20 bucks. <laughs> That's what the skins format is all about. Made up for it last week a little he bit, though. He certainly did. Got, a, got $165 last week. And uh, well over $2,000 now for this, his 11th week in the series. Mike Giusti settles for a seven. And Dave Driscoll takes another eight. So each of them looking for their first marks. I mentioned uh, Candlepin Stars and Strikes a moment ago. Be sure and join us tomorrow at 12 noon. And a strike for John Lang. Waited a long time this week. Last week he opened up with two. This time he waits till the second box and throws his first strike. Wins the skin also with that strike. Tom Morgan fills his spare with five. 
tomorrow at noon on Candlepin Stars and Strikes. Dave Arsenault goes for his third straight win. He'll be facing Rich Moran. Hope you can join us for that tomorrow at noon. Candlepin action every Saturday and Sunday at noon here on the Winds of New England. Tom Morgan takes eight. He stands at 23. And here's the big bomb from John Lang. Brooklyn side. And a back tap on the five pin. Box number three worth $20. And Dave Driscoll, no break there. The 5-10. Oh, big strike for Mike Schuste. His first mark makes and it a big one in the third. And it's still there. Another eight for Dave, his third in a row. Mike Juicy unloading. An unload he does. No doubt about that one in the one-two pocket. He stands in line to win this skin if neither Tom nor John can throw a strike. For John, it would be a double. If he were to put another one up in the third. Uh, Morgan punches through the center. But they're still falling. He's really just about got a spare leave there now. Which two, should help him. Two, six, and ten. John Lang will have the two, seven, and ten. Give the skin to Mike Justy. His first for $20. And no, Mike missed the object and then missed it with the ball coming back. He had to get a piece of that two pin. Let's see if John goes far right in the wood. Tries it. Oh, wow. Not quite on the ten pin. Ten for Tom. John Lang will be in the overall lead here in the early going. As he takes 10 also, 39 through three. Box number four worth $25. And Mike Juicy next to throw, working on a strike. Candlepin Skins brought to you in part by our friends at Coca-Cola. Always the real thing. Always Coca-Cola. Uh-oh. Well, that's why it's good. It's a strike fill. Half yeah. Worcester. Half Worcester left for Mike. And Dave, Dave Driscoll still looking for his first mark. He'll have the four horsemen. Oh, Mike, almost. How about it? No, it'll be a nine fill on the strike. And Dave Driscoll has his first mark. Ten box for Mike Juicy. The four horsemen actually caught the wood. And not a snap forward to take the head pin. I don't know if he was actually planning that. That's not a bad strategy because if he hit that head pin, it might have deadened the ball and not continue down for the three, six, and ten. John Lang leaving himself to two, four, and six. Tom, two, four, six, ten. One of the rare times that Tom hasn't carried an extra pin. Well, Wood was still moving. I thought he still had time to do it. <laughs> well, I don't know if Tom intended to go that far left, but the two pin is still there. Yeah, give the skin to Dave Driscoll in the fourth. His first. So we've rolled four boxes, and each of our four bowlers has a skin already. Tom, a slight lead, as you can see, over Mike Justy, and I'm sorry, it's John with a slight lead, and followed in third is Tom Morgan. Oh, oh. strike on spare, Dave Driscoll. And Dave was low man on the totem pole until that happened. He's got a chance now to climb right back in the total pinfall race and stands in line to win his second skin if no one else can strike. $25 skin here in the fifth. This may be playable here for Mike Juice. Five, six, and ten. Oh, he's got to have a piece of that wood. Well, maybe it wasn't there. As that wood deflects away. And let's look at the strike by Dave Driscoll. That was there. Well, Davis found the range the last two frames, spare and then strike. 
He's the only bowler with two marks to this point. Tom's through the center again. And John That's trying to have the skin, go. and he does. Takes that $25 away from Dave Driscoll, so it'll carry over to the next box. Oh, nice 10 box for Tom Morgan, but hey, we've got a story here. Depending on the fills of those strikes, uh, Tom Morgan may be in fourth place here after four boxes. Here's the strike by John Lang. Buries that ball in the 1-3 pocket and then waits for the wood to come over and take care of the four. Having the skin, it'll be a $50 six box when we come back on Candlepin Skins. Candlepin Skins is brought to you in part by Tri-State Megabucks. And now with Mega Cash, choose your dream. You're looking at Mike Juicy, who will bowl in the sixth box here at Pilgrim Lanes. Oh, he's got the strike. His second strike of the match. Oh, the double for Dave. He oh. takes it right away. Wow. Well, we already know we have a carryover. Here's Mike Juicy's strike. And then Dave Driscoll threw one right on top of him, a double. John Lang on a strike. Tom Morgan has had four open boxes in a row. And he is, in fact, in fourth place right now. And there's a fine spare and a strike for John Lang. And just a seven box for Tom Morgan, so he is going to have to come from behind to keep his string alive. There's the spare by John Lang. So the carryover means the seventh box is now worth $80. And Dave Driscoll throwing on a double strike here. Big ball for Dave Driscoll early in the match. Uh oh. Get away from him. Uh oh. Did not want that to happen. Wow, Mike Juicy was going for a double. That looked like a much better ball. A nice recovery by Dave. He may get this. No, not enough. And yeah, one mistake in that first ball. That got away from him. He pulled it left and only got one pin. Came right back, almost converted the spare. And he'll take it out for a 10. Because of that one fill, Dan, he really didn't get the full benefit of the double strike. Well, back in the fifth, Dave had the strike. Tom, uh, John took it away, matching the strike. Carry over in the sixth box. Mike Justy threw the strike, and Dave took it away from him with a strike. <laughs> so now we're uh, showing a 10 box by Dave Driscoll as far as the leader for the skin. So we should ask Tom for a loan, I guess, right? I think so. OK. Based on those numbers? Tom would love a mark right now as he's in a dry spell. He's gone uh, five boxes in a row without marking, which is really a news flash based on the way he's been bowling here. Oh, look out. On a spare, a pair of nine drops. Uh-oh. Ooh, Tom misfires, so this will be for the skin. And John Lang takes it with the spare. Three marks in a row for John Lang. Tom Morgan still in fourth place. Still plenty of time, but you don't want to let too much time go by. No, and you don't want three bowlers in front of you. It's one to catch one bowler, but to catch two other bowlers, that's a little more difficult. Dave for the spare, no. And Mike settles for an eight. 
Dave Driscoll takes 10. John Lang, the overall pinfall leader right now, or he will be, or actually he already is, but you'll get the full idea after he fills this mark, fills it with five. Tom Morgan, kind of a light hit, but he's got something to work on here, the two, five, and seven. See if he can convert this one, no. That's seven boxes in a row now for Tom. Remember, only a 10 boxes up there for the skin. And there's the carryover. So the ninth box will be worth $60. John Lang having taken a, the biggest skin of the day so far, an $80 skin in the previous box. Not a bad break by missing the head pin. One, two left for Dave. A little more difficult for Mike. The three, six on the right with a four pin on the left. Now well, sliding by the head pin there. Oh, and what yes. a shot. Great cut shot by Mike Giusti. Dave Driscoll settles for a 10, even though he began with a spare leave. This one's worth another look. Throwing that two right over into the four pin. Tom Morgan, four horsemen. John Lang with a nine drop. And probably the carryover. Oh boy. Tom is firing again. And there is the carryover with the spares. Tom Morgan takes 10 for his eighth open box in a row. And the 10th box, now worth $135. Mike Juicy on a spare. A little high. Takes seven, though. Dave will look at the one, three, and seven pins. Let's see if Mike can work this. Yes. Oh, yes. He's right. Great shot there. Another spare in the tenth for Mike Dusty. Not quite for Dave. Dave will take a ten. Four tens in a row after the double strike of 124 for Dave Driscoll. Here's the spare for Mike Dusty. The two, four, ten. And now the fill. Uh-oh, he lost that one to the left. Just three for a 120. Well, Tom would like a, a mark up here. And of course, John is filling a spare in the, in the ninth. But a decent mark for Tom. You'll be back in the hunt. Don't forget, $135 skin here, too. Mike Juicy has a spare up. Well, John Lang will have a shot at one. Tom's right in the pocket, gets the extra pin this time. That's what he hasn't been doing uh, in this first game. He just hasn't been getting those good breaks that he was getting before. No spare for John Lang. Tom could really use one, and he gets one in the 10th. That creates the carryover. 10 box for John Lang. He will have the pinfall lead after one game at 137. Very important mark, as you said, uh, Dan, here for Tom Morgan in the 10th, not only to carry over the skin, but more importantly, for total fin pinfall reasons. Oh, just four in the one-two pocket, but only four. 103 for Tom Morgan. He's going to be in fourth place after one game. John Lang with the big score in game one, 137. And we are going to have a sizable carryover, $155 in box number one of game two when we come back in a minute. Well, in the first four boxes of this match, each bowler won a skin. 
and it stayed that way except for John Lang, who added three more. He's got a total of $100 already, and uh, the other three guys on the board, as we mentioned, but the big story right now is, well, we've got a couple of big stories, Dan. We've got a big carryover skin here worth $155 to start game two, and we also have Tom Morgan in fourth place at 103. Yeah, that hasn't happened to in quite some time. Dave Driscoll to start game two. And Mike Giusti with the spread eagle. Dave just sliding by the head pin. Dave Driscoll is the guy who's in second place as we move to game two with that 124. Mike Giusti just behind at 120, and then Tom Morgan with the 103. Nine box for Mike Giusti after the 10 for Dave Driscoll. Ten conversion there for Dave. Tom Morgan had eight consecutive open frames in that first game. And once again, well, there's the extra pin. That's what we've been talking about. He's done that so many times during this stretch. Tom gets that great mix on his first ball. And gets the spare. Oh, he's a little far left. I didn't saw that look in his face like. <laughs> oh, oh where that, how did the nine pin go down? John Lang with a great shot. Let's take a look at that. Oh, it just clipped the nine pin coming by into the seven pin. That's, a, that's another carryover. Box number two now worth $175. John Lang, by the way, Dan, carrying a 120 average. His average in the last five games here on Candlepin Skins over three weeks, 142. Wow. Well. That's why he's been back so many times. Oh, Dave Driscoll converts the half Worcester for a spare. And Mike Giusti, disgusted with himself, takes a six box. Let's take a look at the half Worcester conversion for Dave Driscoll, playing it the conventional way in that one three pocket. Tom Morgan and John Lang now both, as you see, working on spares. John first. Through the middle, he'll take six. Tom Morgan in the pocket, he'll take eight. A spare would create another carryover. And there it is. Oh, wow. And no for Tom Morgan. Tom slid over about five feet trying to use the body English to get that spare to go, but it didn't go. This one went, though, for John Lang. Just catches a piece of the wood, drives the ball straight through the four, two, uh, two and a four, and the wood takes the 6-10. And of those two shots, you would think Tom would be the one to create the carryover, because Speaking of carryovers, oh, Dave good. Driscoll fills his spare with eight. This third box worth $195. This is a six box carryover now. We haven't had a skin one since the seventh frame of the first game. A reminder that Candlepin Skins brought to you in part by Rockingham Toyota Dodge Nissan. Come to Salem and save. Rockingham Toyota Dodge Nissan on Route 97 in Salem, New Hampshire. The hand for John Mazzetti who cleared away a piece of wood and Dave Driscoll couldn't convert the spare. And neither could Mike. Ten box for Dave. Ditto for Mike Giusti. So $195 skin, and there are no marks up there yet. Well, I dare say it's going to it's going to take a strike, probably. Oh, oh there about it is. It. There's one. Unless John throws one, that's $195 for Tom Morgan. Let's see. Nope. $195 skin 
for Tom Morgan. That was a two fill on a spare, by the way, for John Lang, that half Worcester. And he'll take an eight. Well, a huge strike for Tom Morgan, not only to win the skin, but he marks when nobody else does. So he'll gain some ground. He's 34 pins out of the lead. And some 21 pins out of second. But he's now working on a strike. Dave Driscoll will have another split to shoot at. This fourth box now worth $25. Oh, Mike Juicy deserved that spare. Made a heck of a try at it. Likewise for Dave Driscoll. 10 for Mike. 9 for Dave. So again, Tom and John get up with no marks facing them, just a 10 box for the skin. But more importantly now, the, the focus is going to be on the total pinfall race. Tom was in fourth place, but he's the only one working on the mark. This will be his first ball of two on the strike. Nice smooth release. Gets one extra pin, and it may fall in a favorable spot. Well, I certainly would give it a try. John gets his spare. We'll see if Tom can carry it over. Yes, he does. Spare on strike for Tom Morgan as he begins to mount a charge. Here it is. He just plays the wood effectively. Both pieces. One takes the 10 pin, and the other, the other three pins are the two, four, and seven. Carry over. Fifth box worth $50. Tom now is in third place. And closing in on second. Big spare for Dave Driscoll. He is still in second place trying to fend off Tom Morgan. Mike Giusti has gone the first five boxes of the second game without marking. Very costly. Well, you see Tom spare on strike. Three marks are the first four boxes. This will be the fill. Right in the pocket, oh. big strike. May win the skin too, unless John can match it. A $50 skin for Tom Morgan. He had thrown really two quiet games in a row. He threw a 109 in the second game last week and then a 103 opener today. There's a fine spare for John Lang. So John and Tom are getting it done, but Tom is still struggling to get second place right now. We'll take another look at his strike as we duck away for a break. We'll be back for a great finish here on Candlepin Skins in a minute. We are back on Candlepin Skins. Sixth box worth $25. Mike Juicy in desperate need of some good news and he drops nine. Solid nine pin drop, leaves just the five pin. Dave Driscoll on a spare. Four horsemen left, that's a six drop. A virtual tie with Tom Morgan for that second spot, but Tom will be working on a strike. And a much needed mark for Mike Juicy. See if Dave can convert, he does. Big spare. Take a look at the four horsemen, Dave Driscoll. Well, if Tom Morgan fills his strike with more than six, he will at least temporarily move into second place. But of course, he's still opposite that spare by Dave Driscoll. John Lang on a spare. Takes seven. Right. 
Well, the two, four, seven, and ten for Tom. Piece of wood that may take the ten pin if he's on the two. Oh, oh. great shot by John. Wow. Let's see if Tom can match it. Yes, he does. Spares all the way across in the sixth. That's a carryover. Seventh box will be worth $55. There's John Lang's cut shot, the 2-4-6. He can't afford to let up either. Tommy now is in second by four pins. All bowlers working on marks, though. This is a fill of seven for Dave on his spare. Now, now Mike. Fill of eight. He really had a pin dancing down there. <laughs> he certainly did. 2 4 10 for Dave. Spare again for Mike Giusti. As he's going to try and take a run at second place. An eight for Dave Driscoll. Well, advantage Mike Morgan right now because he could take over second. Working on his fourth mark in a row. Five out of six in this game. This is a $55 carryover here in the seventh. Mike Juicy leads with the spare. Tommy Morgan in the pocket this time. The four, five, seven. And what's good is the whiff, the wood comes way out front. It's better out front than up next to the four and seven. John Lang with just a half Worcester fill on his spare. Tom wants a piece of the wood and the ball take the five and the wood take the four and the seven, but it forgot the seven. <laughs> Oh, almost for John. Wow. Gave that a great run. Ten box for Tom Morgan. He has moved into second place by six pins. You got to look at the board. John Lang takes his ten box. And he is still the pinfall leader at 229. But you can see both Tom and Dave with a shot at him and Mike Giusti working on a spare. So everybody's still very much alive here. Yep, the only one that's working on a spare, the one is in fourth position right now, and that's the fellow you're looking at right now. And Mike Giusti just won that last skin for $55 with this spare that he's now filling with six. Well, the four, five, seven, eight sounds bad, but he's got a piece of wood in between that could help. He's going to play the triangle and the four, seven, and that wood should help the four pin dance toward the five. Nice plan and played Ooh. it on the inside, which I don't think he wanted to do. Oh, great oh shot. Oh, oh, he made it. What a shot. Oh, my. Ten for Mike Giusti, but how about the spare by Dave Driscoll? Worth another look. Take a look. Inside, gets the three, six, and ten. Wood rolls back, takes the four, and finally the two, and he's still in the ballgame. Very much so. Pressure back on Tom Morgan and John Lang, really. Big first ball for John, takes nine. And that wood turned. I don't know if it turned enough. I think it did. Tom Morgan, also a nine drop, and he's got to watch out for the wood. Spare would create a carryover. John gets it, and there is the carryover. Big shot for Tom Morgan, too, and the wood. Oh, the oh. ball came back. How about that? You see Tom's reaction. He was surprised as much as anyone. He thought he had missed it. That's a tough piece of wood. Looked like the wood was going to take it anyways, but then all of a sudden the ball came back. Oh, my. Hey, when things are going well. <laughs> well, Dave's in a fight with, uh, with Tom for second. Here's his fill on his spare. He just made a terrific one himself. Leaves the four horsemen right. One, three, six, and ten. Oh, boy. Now, Mike, Mike Juicy needs marks. And he goes right through the middle, taking out this, the one, five, and nine. Dave trying to make the four horsemen again. Not this time. This is a carryover skin worth $60 in the ninth, but keeping a very close eye now on total pinfall. You've got a great battle here. Although advantage Tom Morgan right now. Seven box for Mike Giusti. That may just about spell the end for Mike mathematically, unless something really special happens in the 10th. But Tom ready to fill this mark. That's his advantage right now over Dave Driscoll for second. 
Well, he can't afford to make a mistake, obviously. He's trailing by 10, but he'll get the box and the fill on the spare. A little heavy, got six, matched the six that was put up by Dave. Not an easy spare leave, though. Two, four, seven, and 10. John Lang fills his spare with eight. 10 leads for the skin right now. Oh! oh, wow. Well, he got a little lucky on the last one. That one had nothing to do with luck at all. What a shot. John Lang gets his spare also to create the carryover. And here's Tom Morgan's shot. Take a look. I'll tell you, oh. there's a pro. Got the ball coming back, got a break on that mark before, and now he makes a perfectly clean cut shot on a 2 4 7 10 for another mark. The last skin of the day will be worth $135 as we have another carryover. Well. Oh, oh, there's a big strike for Dave Driscoll. He is still. not out of it. Spare for Mike Juicy. Here's the strike for Dave Driscoll. He may need another one. Take yeah. a look. He's tripping the six. He probably needs another one in would, order to I have any chance so. for I second. I think so. Yeah. Unless Tom really butchers the spare. And Mike finishes with an eight fill for a 111 and a two game total of 231. Here's the ball for Mike's got to hope that somebody else throws a strike when they get up to to keep him in, in contention for this last skin. Boy, Dave Driscoll is going to have a very, very good score for two games, but it may not be enough. An eight fill on his strike, a 132 and a 256. But with Mike Morgan already sitting at 244. Working on a spare and a full box to go. You would think Tom Streak will stay alive. Somebody's going to have to throw a strike here to uh, have the skin with Dave Driscoll or else he'll take the last one of the day. Let's see if Tom can do it. No, so give the last $135 skin of the day to Dave Driscoll. A spare in the 10th for John Lang. And Tom Morgan misfires, but. <laughs> they don't have uh, the advantage of the people in the crowd as we do. He's well, Tom, coming, Tom's coming checking back. the scoreboard, but he knows yeah. that he is already. Yeah. Well, he, I think the moan of the crowd got, a, got right. him thinking maybe I was right. not adding correctly, but four <laughs> pins. <laughs> he had already gotten second place uh, before that last shot. So the last skin of the day goes to Dave Driscoll. John Lang will throw the last ball of this match on his spare in the 10th and John Lang is going to have another terrific score of his own he drops nine 147 and a 284 for John Lang who finishes second uh, first for the second week in a row Tom Morgan by four pins finishes second over Dave Driscoll Tom will be back for his 12th straight week next Saturday we will be back to wrap up the numbers on this one and talk to the bowlers in a minute Welcome back to Candlepin Skins, Doug Brown and Dan Murphy, and uh, more Tom Morgan, more John Lang. But uh, for Tom, the toughest challenge uh, maybe since several weeks ago is Dave Driscoll took him right down to the final box. Well, Tom just mentioned at the break, uh, he thought he was going out the same way he came in with a double strike against him this time. <laughs> but uh, he came back, and somehow that ball came back to knock that five pin down, and then he made a nice cut shot, and then he was in again. More great stuff. Let's check all the numbers from this one now. First of all, the total pinfall. Again, uh, John Lang, great consistency as he throws a 284 to finish first for the second week in a row. Tom Morgan takes second for the second week in a row with a 260, but Tom had to throw a 157 second game in order to continue his streak. Dave Driscoll with a great effort, 256. And Mike Giusti was right in the battle, too, for a while, uh, finishing with a 231. As for the Skins prize money, Tom Morgan on the top of that list, too. I guess that makes up for a couple of weeks ago, right, Tom? $265 in Skins money for Tom today. Dave Driscoll got that last big skin of the day for $160. John Lang and Mike Giusti on the tote board as well. Let's talk to both bowlers now. First, Tom Morgan. A big round of applause for Tom as, uh, boy, I don't know. <laughs> You're making this tougher and tougher. Uh, yeah. Now, did you know 
Did you know that you had already gotten second place before that last ball? Yes. When I got up, I figured if I threw seven, I know I got in there. Right. But then when I missed it, it was a woo. I said, whoa, <laughs> oh, let me check my math there. You know what I mean? So I stepped back and I did okay. I, I only won by two. They were just they were just ooing because actually they were booing because you missed you the missed shot. Another, another right. one. Yeah, right, right. right. But I just wanted to double check my math. But yeah, I thought I had one. I went digging up and threw that strike. Right. I'm sitting there, I'm sitting, I'm going out the way I came in. <laughs> All I could think about was going to throw a double right back at me. They turn him out and say, see you later. <laughs> he threw a good ball, he got a top wake, and then I got a lucky little mix on that ball. So We'll see you next week for an even dozen, all right? Oh, sounds great to me. All right, Tom, Thank thanks you. very much. Congratulations. Thank you. And now let's talk to John Lang. Keep the applause going. John Lang, another terrific performance. Congratulations, sir. Uh, it's, we talked about this with, uh, with Eric Young uh, a few weeks ago, was that it, his streak was kind of lost because Tom has the big streak going, and now you're kind of in the same boat. Yeah, he uh, steals the show, that that's, guy. That's right. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Well, he's so shy, too. Yeah, he's yeah, camera no, shy. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if you're aware of this, John, but uh, your league average being 120 in three weeks here on Candlepin Skins, your average is 143. That's not too bad. Don't tell the state tournament. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thanks, John, very much. Congratulations. Thank we'll see you, you again next week as well. Tom and John will return again next week. Tom Morgan for his 12th straight week. And John Lang will be here for number four in a row. And they are putting up big numbers, but getting challenged and meeting all the challenges so far. I think he's getting tired. I think I'm almost ready for him. <laughs> almost ready. I think he's real tired now. <laughs> he's getting older every week. That's an advantage for, for both of us, I guess. And I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> Good point. Well, we'll be back next Saturday at noon, of course, for Tom Morgan's 12th straight appearance. John Lang will join him for his fourth in a row. Our two incoming bowlers will be from the Cape Cod roll-off area. Steve Avini and Bob Kenyon. We hope you join us next Saturday for that Candlepin Skins match. Don't forget, Dave Arsenal tomorrow on Candlepin Stars and Strikes goes for his fourth straight win and a spot in the Tournament of Champions. We'll have that match for you tomorrow at noon here on the Winds of New England. Until then, for Dan Murphy and the whole crew, I'm Doug Brown. Have a great weekend. Thanks for being with us.